This one is 4.6. Here we have to sketch the Mohr circle for each one of the following cases uh, that are given here. So to start with, let's understand what is Mohr circle and how do we draw this. So there are a few steps that we need to follow for Mohr circle. And step one in this is that we should be able to read the right values of stresses. And what are those three stresses? We have sigma xx, sigma yy, and tau xy. Now, once we have these values, we will define two points, point x and point y. The point x is defined as sigma xx, comma, minus tau xy, and point y is sigma yy, comma, tau xy. Now, these two points right here, these are going to define the diameter of your Mohr circle. So in step three, what we are going to do, yeah, step three is going to draw x, y diameter. And once we have this diameter, for example, you draw your point x right here and point y right here. And now when we are drawing these points, the coordinate system is going to be your sigma xx and sigma yy. Both of these values will be plotted on the x-axis and your tau xy will be plotted on the y-axis. So that's how you can uh, draw your diameter. And now once your diameter is done, right in the middle of this is going to be your center for your Mohr circle. And we have this radius right here. So I can combine this in a form of a circle in this line. So this gives you the shape of your Mohr circle. Now to complete this process, in the fourth point, we are going to mark important parameters. And these parameters are, first thing you need to mark your principal stresses. So your principal stresses are going to be on this horizontal line, this side and this side. So this one is your sigma one, first principal stress, and this is right here, your sigma two, that's your, second principal stress. So first one is your principal stresses. These are your sigma one and sigma two. We can mark the radius here. This is your radius R. And we can mark this angle. We call this two theta P. So angle two theta P which is nothing but orientation of one, two or principal axis. And you can, of course, mark the coordinates of this center also here. So if you do this, that's how your four circle is completed. So now let's look at these individual cases. So let's start with the first case right here. So if you notice in the first case, the values that we have here, sigma x6 value is given as sigma naught, sigma yy is equals to zero, and tau xy is also equals to zero in the first case. So that's your first step. In the second step, we are going to find two points, point x and point y. The point x is sigma xx comma tau xy with a minus sign, but since it's zero, it doesn't matter. Your y point is sigma yy, comma plus tau xy, so this is zero comma zero. So now I can have an excess system here. This is your excess system. Uh, we have to mark these two points. So your point one somewhere here, sigma naught comma zero. This one is zero comma zero, and I can combine these two to form this nice circle. Now to mark those values, so this is your x point, and this one is your y. Because it's a flat line, joining x and y, your principal x is also going to be exactly the same. So this one is sigma one, and this one is your sigma two. Value here is sigma naught comma zero. So sigma one also becomes zero, which is the normal stress at that point. Similarly, these two values are zero comma zero. So sigma two also is zero in this case. Now, if you look at your radius, since this diameter from here to here is sigma naught, so this gives us the radius of the circle is going to be sigma naught divided by two. And in terms of two theta p, two theta p because the principal axis matches your xy coordinate system. So if xy is 
given like this. The one two also matches it exactly in this manner. So your two theta p value in this case is equals to zero because x y and one two is overlapping each other. So that's how the the first case can be solved. Now let's look at the second case here. The second case, your sigma x x value in this case is zero. Your sigma y y value in this case because it's a compressive stress given right here. So this is minus sigma naught and tau x y here also is equals to zero. Okay. So now we define two points, your x point and your y point. Your x point in this case is sigma x x comma tau x y, which is zero comma zero. Again, minus tau x y, but since it's zero. In this case, sigma y y, which is minus sigma naught comma tau x y, which is zero. So now in this case, when I try drawing this more circle, it's going to be very similar to the first case. So now your x point is going to be right here and your y point is somewhere here. So this is your x, which is 0, 0, and this is your y point, which is minus sigma naught comma 0. So once I have these two points, I can connect them by a circle, and that's how your circle looks. In this case also, if you notice, your diameter here, from here to here, this is again sigma naught. So this tells us that your radius is going to be sigma naught divided by 2. Your 1 and 2 axis again overlaps this here, this is 1 and this is 2. So your sigma 1 value in this case is going to be 0, which is coming from here. And your sigma 2 value in this case is coming from this value, which is minus sigma naught. Again, x and y overlaps with your 1 and 2. So your x is here, y is here. So x comma 1, y comma 2, both of them overlap. That's why 2 theta p value in this case is also equals to 0. That's how you complete the second case, and you can keep on repeating this, this process. So let's do quickly for the third case. In this case, your sigma xx equals to sigma yy equals to sigma naught, and your tau xy is equals to zero. So two points here, x point is going to be sigma xx comma minus tau xy, and your point y is again sigma yy comma plus tau xy. So that's how we get these two points. Interestingly, in this case, when I draw this, both the points, x and y they are going to overlap each other so your x is here and y is also at the same point and their coordinates are sigma naught comma zero so rather than having a circle in this case your most circle is actually a point and this will happen in a specific case when your state of stress is hydrostatic and you can notice it that in this case both sigma x and sigma y was same. So this is the example of a hydrostatic state of stress. Now other parameters don't make much sense in this case since your radius is equals to zero. Now we go to the last case again very similar case here. In this case both your sigma xx and sigma yy are negative. So this is minus sigma naught and your tau xy in this case is also equals to zero. So repeating that same step here your x point in this case is minus sigma naught comma zero, y point again is minus sigma naught comma zero. So when I draw the most circle in this case now, you are again going to get a single point here, but now this point is going to be on the left hand side. So both of your x and y points are minus sigma naught comma zero. Again, this becomes a point and you can see that this is also hydrostatic case. In the first case, you had a negative pressure, meaning your stresses are away from the center and in this case you have a positive pressure that's why stresses are towards the center of the circle now the other cases here if you consider the fourth case here you can see your sigma xx value is sigma naught sigma yy value in this case is minus sigma naught and tau xy again in this case it equals to zero two points x and y where x point is sigma xx which is sigma naught comma minus tau xy so minus zero doesn't have any change here. So this one becomes minus sigma naught comma zero because it is sigma y y comma plus tau x y. So now when I draw these two points, your x point is on the positive side and your y point is on the negative side, equal distance. I can join them by circle. So that's how your circle looks. This is your point x and this one is your point y. Now this point is again, principal stress 1, principal stress 2. So since this is sigma naught comma 0, your sigma 1 becomes sigma naught, which is coming from here. Similarly, your y was minus sigma naught comma 0. So your sigma 2 becomes 
minus sigma naught. For the radius, in the case, you see the diameter here, from here to here is 2 sigma naught, so the radius becomes sigma naught here, and 2 theta p in this case also is going to be equals to 0 because 1, 2 axis and x, y axis is matching each other. Now, the next case here, now in this case, there is no normal stress, so sigma xx or sigma yy is equals to 0, but we have a value of tau xy. On the positive phase, your stress is acting upwards, meaning positive direction, so this is tau naught. Now, your point x and point y in this case, x is going to be sigma xx comma minus tau xy, so we get this. y point is sigma yy comma tau xy, so we get this right here. Now, to plot these two points, now this time, rather than having horizontal line here, in this case, we are going to have your x point sitting down below here, so this is x, 0 comma minus tau naught. This one sitting right here, which is y, 0 comma plus tau naught. I can connect these two points and I can draw this circle in this manner. Now, in this case, your sigma 1 and sigma 2 is right here. So, this is 1 and this is 2. Your sigma 1 value, if you look at the radius, this diameter right here is 2 tau naught. So, your radius is tau naught in this case. So, if this is your center, the value here is going to be sigma naught. Pardon me, this is tau naught comma 0 and similarly here minus tau naught comma 0. So, you can clearly see the sigma naught is equal to tau naught and your sigma 2 is going to be minus tau naught. Now, looking at your orientation 2 theta p angle, you can see that from your x axis, we can reach when we go by 90 degrees here. So, your 2 theta p angle in this case is equal to 90 degrees. So, now how does it reflect in reality? If I have my x coordinate here and my y coordinate here. Now, when I'm starting from this x point and going to this point one, on the Mohr circle, I'm going by 90 degrees. So, in reality, to reach that axis one, I'll be going exactly half, which is 45 degrees. Now, similar thing you can try from, let's say, y to 2. If I'm going from here to here, again, I'm moving by 90 degrees there. So, in this case, from y to 2, I'll be reaching again by 45 degrees. So, you can notice that this angle between your 1 and 2 axis here is also 90 degrees. So, this angle right here is 90 degrees here. So, whatever angles you notice on the Mohr circle, in real life, those angles are half of action. So, Mohr circle, Mohr circle theta is real theta over 2 when you plot it on the coordinate axis. Now, look at the last case here. In this case, we have sigma xx equals to sigma yy equals to 0 and your tau xy in this case is minus tau naught because positive phase your stress is pointing downwards. Now, this is exact replica of the previous case. So, if I define two points here, those two points are going to be x and y. x is 0 comma tau naught in this case because this will come with a negative sign and this will be 0 comma minus tau naught because this is sigma yy comma tau xy. So, now when I plot these two points, you are going to have your x point sitting right on the top here and your y point will be sitting right at the bottom and I can combine these two points in a circle. That's how your circle looks. <coughs> your principal stresses again, in this case, your sigma 1 is going to be tau naught and sigma 2 is going to be minus tau naught. This is point 1 and this is point 2 right here, radius here is tau naught again. Now, to draw your relationship between 